Hi there. Are you thinking about applying for an investor visa in the United States, but you're curious to know what kind of money can you use to make this investment? Um, if so, stay tuned. We're going to talk about that today. I'm immigration attorney Kehlani Huxbia Franca. I have a U.S. immigration law firm in Austin, Texas, serving clients all over the world. And we focus especially on investor visa and other business immigration clients from Spanish speaking countries. So if that's you, stay tuned and let's talk. What's an investor visa? Let's do a quick recap of what an investor visa is and what we're talking about. And then let's talk about how, how do you know if the money that you want to invest um, will count for your investor visa application? Because that's really important. You don't want to spend a bunch of money, prepare your business in the US, but not have the money you spend actually count towards your case. That would be terrible. So step one, an investor visa is a visa that allows someone from a foreign country to come to the United States and run their U.S. business. And we're talking about an E-2 visa. There's something separate called an EB-5 uh, investor green card. That's not what we're talking about here. That is a separate thing that involves a million or $2 million. What we're talking about here is an E-2 investor visa case that usually involves an investment of around $100,000. It can be less and it can be more. It really just depends on your business. You have to invest money in your U.S. business to get it up and running, and then you can get an E-2 visa to come to the United States and run your business. A question I get from my clients all the time is, what money can I use? Like, what counts as my investment? So I want to talk about two things, which is one, how you get the money, and two, how you spend the money. Let's talk first about how you get the money. For a U.S. investor visa, that's an E-2 visa, you can use money that you got legally in any way. As long as you got your money legally, you can use it as part of your investment for your E-2 visa and your U.S. business. So what does that mean? Let's talk through some of the most common things I see and the documentation you're going to need to use to back it up. So the most common thing I see from my clients is savings. So you can use your personal savings from earned income to be your investment. Now, the U.S. government is not just going to believe you when you tell them where your money came from. You have to prove it. So if you're going to use personal savings, then we'll need to see tax returns from your home country for the last two, three, five, eight years, however many years we need to tell a true story about the fact that the money you're investing came from your personal savings. So if you make $300,000 a year and you're investing $70,000, okay, maybe we only need like two years of tax returns. If you make $40,000 a year and you're investing $200,000, we're going to need a lot more years, many years of tax returns, because it would not really be feasible for you to save $200,000 in three years making $40,000 a year. So it all depends on your personal situation, but you can absolutely use earned income and your personal savings to invest in your U.S. business. Okay, so what else? The next most common thing I see with my clients is a gift of money. So oftentimes um, people will give money to relatives, right? That can be an inheritance you got or a gift while someone is living um, in any number of ways. And that is completely fine. You can use a gift of funds to be the money you invest in the U.S. business. Oh, this money has to be your money. So the person who gave you the money has to give you the money. It has to be yours completely free and clear to invest in your business. What's not going to work is the person who gave you the money sending money to the U.S. and investing in a business and then saying it's your money. That's not your money in the eyes of the U.S. government. So what we have to show is that the money is yours, yours to control completely, yours to make decisions with completely before you spend it on the U.S. business. How do we do that? Well, you can do it in a very formal way. For example, my clients in Mexico have something called an acta de donación, which is like a donation certificate that is a formalized showing of a gift of funds from one person to another person. If you have that in your country, that can be really helpful. It looks very formal. It's hard for the U.S. government to say this is fake, right? If you've made a, a formal legal document showing the gift. Sometimes all that's needed is a an informal letter. Um, it's formal in the sense that it will be signed by both people, the person giving the gift and the person receiving it. Um, but it's informal in the sense that it's not filed with a government entity. I draft it for my clients. Um, they tell me the information about the gift. I put it down and both parties sign it, and that's enough. Um, a lot of times I have husbands and wives, spouses, gifting each other money because sometimes one of them has more personal savings, but the other one's going to be the investor. So you just have to be really clear 
about the flow of funds. You cannot make any assumptions for the U.S. government. You have to clearly establish where the money came from. Now, if you're using a gift, we don't technically have to show where the person who gave you the money got the money. We don't have to submit that on the front end, but it's possible the government's going to want to see that, right? Because if they didn't get to ask for that, it would be an easy way to get around using illegal money. You can get money illegally and then you just give it to someone else and now they can use it. And so sometimes we'll have to say, say your, your husband is giving you a gift of money. So the husband gives money to the wife. Maybe we will include the tax returns of the husband showing that he got that money through his earned income and the savings from his salary, for example. So we've talked about um, personal savings being used as an investment. And we've talked about a gift of funds being used as an investment. Another really common source of investment funds is a sale of real estate. Um, and that's absolutely permitted. Um, if you sell, if you sell real estate that is in your name and you receive proceeds from that, you can use that for your US business. You'll want to be quite careful with how the sale is documented. So if you own half of the home, if the home is in your name and your spouse's name, um, then only half of that is going to be treated as your investment fund. So let's say your house is worth $400,000 both you and your husband own it. You sell the home and you get $400,000 out of the home. If you want to invest $300,000, then we're going to use the sale documents for your house to prove you're $200,000 because that's half of the total and you're a co-owner. And then your husband can gift you $100,000 from his proceeds. And we'll have a letter showing he's gifting that to you so that we have all the document clear, all the documents clearly laid out to show where the money came from, who owned it and that the person who's investing the money owns it 100% free and clear with no restrictions and no co-ownership with anyone else. Okay, so another ah, another very common source of investment funds is earnings from a business that either you own completely or that you own part of. That's a completely legal way to get money and can absolutely be the investment you use for your US business. But of course, you have to be careful documenting that because a business and a person are separate things. Even if you are the 100% owner of the business, you have to be careful about how you transfer the funds. If this is your situation, I really encourage you to speak with an attorney before you transfer any money to make sure you're doing it in a way that will support your investor visa. I don't want you transferring a bunch of money and then asking if it's okay because you may have spent $200,000 you can't use towards your visa and I don't want you in that situation. So start ahead start on the front end asking these questions. So let's say easiest scenario that you have a business in Mexico where most of my clients live and you're a hundred percent owner of that business. You can transfer money from that business and um, that is profit from that business that is your money that you control completely. Now you may be able to transfer it from the Mexican business to the U.S. business. You may be able to give it to yourself directly and then transfer it to the U.S. These questions involve both immigration issues and tax issues. So before you start doing anything with business funds, you wanna get both your immigration attorney and your tax professional involved in this conversation. But for our high level discussion today, suffice to know that your proceeds, your uh, ganancias, your profit from your US or foreign business can be the investment funds you use for your E2 investor visa. Last but not least, an example I've actually never come across in my practice, but that is legal, um, is lottery winnings. So say you win the lottery and you win $4 million, and not only are you very happy, but you also legally got that money. And you can use that money to invest in your U.S. business and get your E2 visa. Um, so if that's your situation, congratulations. That's really cool. Um, but also you can use that money. Things that are a problem. So when do we get into problems with source of funds? Um anything that can't be clearly documented or where the documents don't quite make sense. So um, also don't make the assumption that you can just kind of paper things in a way that works for the case and the US government won't figure it out. They understand what documents are real and what documents are fake and they're going to ask for proof until they are satisfied. So you should not try and hide anything about your source of funds or try and be less than clear about where your money came from because that's going to raise major red flags and you're going to get your case denied. So the first issue I see is when people want to use money that has come from a business 
but either they're a co-owner of the business or their name's not on the business. So if your name's not on that business at all, you have no right to profit and proceeds from that business. So if you're getting money from that business, how are you getting it? Are you a consultant for them? Are you an employee? You need a clear documentation of why on earth you are owed money from this business. If it's not clear, it looks illegal. I mean, if it looks illegal, it's going to get denied. So that's step one. And um, step two is if you are a co-owner, say you're an owner with four other people, we need to know really clearly what your percentage of ownership is and what percentage of the proceeds you're entitled to and make sure that the amount that you have taken out of the business is actually equal to the amount that you are entitled to through your ownership percentage. If those don't match, we have a problem. It's a fixable problem. Your co-owners can give you money, they can gift you funds. So maybe part of it are your proceeds, part of it are gifts. Um, and there are other other ways to, um, to solve that problem if the facts are real and legitimate. We just need to understand what those facts are and why you're getting this money. Um, Something else I've seen are really big gifts of money that we can't back up. So you get a million dollars from your mom, but you can't tell me where your mom got that money. That's going to be a problem. Um, if your mom sold a house, great. I want that house sale document. If your mom um, got that money from her own earned income, then I want to see her CV and see what her jobs were like to justify how she got that much money through her personal savings. Um Anything like this. So anything you can think of where you're thinking, oh, well, it's not totally clear, but it's, it's okay. I can explain it. Stop yourself right there and back up and think, no, the U.S. government wants us to be very clear. They're not going to believe me. And I need to be very above board with my documentation. So um, the good news is almost any money is going to be fine to use for your E2 investor visa investment amount. Anything that you got legally, no matter how you got it, as long as it's legal, you can use it. The downside is you have to prove it. No one's going to believe you. We have to show how you got it legally. And if it's not your earned savings, your earned income, then um, we're going to need to follow that trail of wherever it came from and back it up, whether it's lottery winnings or a gift or business earnings. We have to have the documents to back it up every step of the way. Um, I hope this has been helpful. If you have any questions about your case, give me a call here below, 512-675-2945. I have these conversations all day long with clients and would love to help you think through the issues in your case. Bye.